Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have something from Ireland, Clonakilty Galley Head Single Malt Irish Whiskey. 700 milliliter bottle, 40%. Here in Germany, 34 euros 90. In Ireland, 39.90. This is a supermarket entry level product from Clonakilty. Whoops, nice cork. So it actually has that press cork here, nice little, um, everything's branded everywhere, all right? So we have here the whale fin, we have here, oh, so we have here, around there. Oh, on the back there's no whale fin, oh no, but down at the bottom there's another whale fin. So um, I will be at the distillery in June of 2022. Really looking forward to that. That's something I've been waiting to do now for two and a half years. Thank you, that evil C word. And um, what they did is they said that this is actually matured and finished at their Atlantic Ocean warehouse. And the galley head is the lighthouse. Um, here we have the lighthouse, by the way. Um, that is right above their warehouse. Their warehouse is down up the coast, basically. Up a little bit higher is the, is the lighthouse. And they actually have this beautiful, beautiful warehouse right on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. I've seen videos, it's amazing. All right, in Clonakilty, that is a city actually in the south, a uh, very, very southern part of, of Ireland. They have their own distillery, they are making their own products. But yet, this is not made by them. I always have a little bit of a problem when they kind of do what they did on the label here. They said here, premium Irish whiskey, gently cut with water, which has been naturally filtered through our coastal rock formation. So the main thing that they can offer for this whiskey is the water. <sighs> I'm sorry, but that does not, for me as a geek, mean anything. All right, so um, this was made someplace else. It's either West Coast or it's a Great Northern Distillers, probably. And um, it says here, also something I don't like on the label, so sorry. Matured and finished in a minimum of two hand-selected casks. You mean sometimes they're three or seven or twelve, and sometimes there's only two? I really didn't get that. Um, because if I read the press release here, it says um, this is an expression uh, they say represents a departure from the brand looking to create a whiskey accessible in terms of price, but the quality and finish consumers expect. Yeah, matured and finished at the Atlantic Ocean Warehouse, the Galley Head Single Malt Whiskey is a marriage of reshaved and retoasted wine casks and Bordeaux red wine casks. Huh. So we have the base, which was bourbon. We have the finish, which is um, STR, which we can't use because I think Dr. Jim Swan actually trademarked it. So they talk about their new age of, of casks. So reshaved, um, retoasted wine casks and Bordeaux red casks. So three, a minimum of two. Mm. All right. So I don't like, I want transparency. I want you to tell me exactly what type of casks are in here. All right, the second thing that really, really doesn't rock my boat is 40%. Yes, it's a supermarket whiskey. Yes, okay. And the third thing that doesn't really rock my boat, sorry for being so harsh at the beginning, is the price. All right, so I can get this over here in Germany. This is the benchmark whiskey. Bushmills, 10-year-old, 40% single malt whiskey. It does say very, very big on the back, mit Zuckerkoller which means here artificial coloring added. I get to get this for always under 25 euros. I've seen this for under 20 euros. Under 20 euros for a 10 year old whiskey. First question, what is the cheapest 10 year old whiskey you know out there? Um, JJ Weiser's, is it JJ Weiser, JW Weiser, J Weiser, whatever. I can't see here. Uh, J.P. Weiser. Wow, that took a while. J.P. Weiser's have a 10-year-old triple cask um, over here in Germany. That I get that for 20 euros on sale, which is fabulous. I can get this for um, under 25 euros, not on sale. I can't think of another whiskey um, over here in uh, Europe that is 10 years age and costs 
in that price category. What's the cheapest 10 year old you can find in your market? Second question of the day is lower shelf whiskey. I'm not going to talk about supermarket. They wanted to go in a supermarket, which you can do also in Europe and many, many other places of the world, and normally not in the States, but lower shelf whiskey. What is the lower shelf Irish whiskey that you know of? I know Kilbegan, I know Jameson, and I know Bushmills. Those are the three Irish whiskeys that I almost always see in the lower shelf region of my supermarket in my case, in your case, probably liquor store. So I'm paying for those whiskeys I just named, Clonakill, Kilbegan, Jameson, and also the Bushmills often under 20 euros. There's a threshold. Anything above 20 is too expensive to take to a party often. And so this is double that price. All right, $39.90 over here, $34.90 at one shop. I've seen it for $39.90 as well. So this is not actually the entry level Irish whiskey. This is at least one, if not two levels above that. <sighs> so enough of my complaining. I'm going to finally nose this. Now the very first, first thing that I do see, um, I need to add a tiny little bit more, is there is a hue of um, a peach color. It's a little red, it's a little peachy. Where does that peach come from? That peach, of course, comes from the red wine cast. The shaved, toasted, and recharred um, red wine, probably a little bit of European oak in there. Um, Bordeaux red wine casks, more American oak, I think. Might be a little bit of a uh, European oak in there. Um, but if I take a look at these two here, I can now do this. You do see that this is the typical um, artificial coloring. This doesn't look artificial colored at all. Now, the problem that I have here, it doesn't say so. Nowhere on the label do we have a natural color mention, which is a shame. It says matured, finished, and bottled in Ireland. Please savor this fine Irish whiskey responsibly, but no mention whatsoever of natural color. And if it is natural color, that would be a really, really big point for a lot of us whiskey nerds out there to go, oh, I'm willing to buy this whiskey then. I try to only buy whiskeys that are non-chilled filtered, 40% difficult. And of course, here we have our, um, then our natural color on the nose. Now, the first thing that pops out is lactic acid. All right. So a little bit of the baby throw up moment. Um, that disturbed me at the very beginning, but then it dissipates with a little while. I might get used to it. I might not have that problem. I think um, if my information is correctly, it has less to do with the distilling process, more with the fermentation process that creates these off notes and you can't get rid of it often through our distillation or through our um, uh, ferment, not fermentation, maturation is the word I'm looking for. Now behind that, I do get fruity moments. I do get a tiny little bit of chocolate there. This has a little bit of a richer, deeper moment going on. This, my Bushmills, is much clearer. It's much more familiar. It's much sweeter and much maltier. If I were a beginner and I were to have both of these in my glass, I would definitely go towards the Bushmills, yeah? I would lean towards the Bushmill and go, oh, this seems to be the better whiskey. Let's try it. Cheers. This does have a good mouthfeel. It feels creamier. There's a little bit of a tannin type of burnt chocolate moment going on toward the back. There is a lot of fruit there. It's a more complex whiskey than I would expect for beginners. Than I would expect for the people normally using their shots for the Jameson, shots for the Bushmill, shots for their Kilbegans. This does have complexity. This has depth to it. 
I'm not sure if I love the depth, um, but it's there. A little bit of that European oak chocolatey moment, a little bit of that red moment going on here. Um, it says here, the casks impart aromas of coca, rich fruits with a flavor of dark chocolate, red, um, red berries, and licorice. Mm. I always have a problem with the word licorice. I mean, we have American licorice, licorice, we have sweet Scandinavian licorice, we have Turkish licorice, and they taste totally different, people. All right, so um, I'm going to go over to my um, Bushmills tent. Cheers. Mm. Here I had a little bit of heat. Here I don't. Here I have much more sweetness. Here I have more of a chocolatey mocha type of European oak going on here. Here I have the maltiness going on. Here I have a little bit of the fruitiness going on. And here I have a little bit more of a creamier mouthfeel. Here I have a little bit more of a watery type of straight spirit. More heat, less heat. Much more sweetness. Nice. I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, so sorry. Going back now here to our Klan Akilti. Um, I can't wait for Klan Akilti to bring out their own products, finally. That would be so helpful and so good, instead of just having sourced products. Um, the owner of Klan Akilti has um, at least two sons. One is basically a representative on the East Coast of America. The other one is a representative on the West Coast. At least that was before COVID and so on. I don't know if they're still there, and they've done a lot of cooperation with beer brewers. So they've taken uh, barrels in which beer had formerly been uh, matured, brought them to the distillery, filled them up with a whiskey, finished the whiskey in them, and then sold those bottles back to the areas around the brewery, which is a great, great marketing gimmick and a marketing... Um, a ploy also sounds negative. A marketing strategy. Yeah, this is a neutral word here. I think that's great. Um, Clown Kilty has a, a fairly big following over here in Germany as well. They've done a lot in the last couple of years to launch the product, to create awareness for the product, and we're just kind of like, just waiting. Come on, give us the real stuff from Clown Kilty. I just can't wait. All right, one last time here. It's got some heat for the 40%. It's definitely young. It's four years is what I'd give this. They did use that, those um, wine barrels here to take out some of that pepper sharpness, some of that alcohol sharpness there. Um, it's got a little bit of a, like I talked about, it's um, that woody finish and it's a little bit of that burnt chocolate wood moment. And it's also a tiny, tiny little bit of the um, burnt chocolate wood tannin dryness. This is a solid C. This is a whiskey I'm going to spend a little bit more time with. I'm going to compare it and just, this is opening the bottle, trying and giving my first impressions. This is something that either it's going to grow on me and I'm going to like more and more. It's something I'm going to distance myself from more and more. One or the other. And I'm still not really sure which one it's going to be. There are good things. And still a little bit of that lactic acid is still there and really just pushes me away from that whiskey time and time again. But then that fruitiness and the chocolateness pulls me back in. The mouthfeel pulls me back in. But then the heat pushes me back away. It's one of those love-hate type of relationships. So maybe this is going to be in my one well, new of my new diva whiskeys which depends on the time of the day and my mood, if I love it or hate it. Who knows? All right, so the two questions were, um, what are the supermarket low um, uh, bottom shelf Irish whiskeys that you, that you know of in your area? What would be a competitor for this? And second of all, um, what whiskey worldwide do you know of that's 10 years of age and is the cheapest? It doesn't have to be the best, it just has to be the cheapest. I think Bushmills 10 is hard to beat there. 
All right, JP Weiser 10. It's a European only with a triple wood. Sorry, I know many Europe people in the North America would love to have it. All right, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell others, share, and also don't forget to comment. Thank you very much. Whiskey Jason here. Bye bye. Thank you.